Uh, we're going to get started. Thank you again to everyone that has joined us online today for our webinar with Jacob Solutions and one of our fantastic clients, uh, CleanMade Kitchen Appliances. Uh, we are going to have a webinar today and hear about how CleanMade have used technology to really uh, turn around their business and fuel their growth as well. Uh, for those that haven't used Zoom before and are new to uh, Zoom video conferencing, just a uh, few quick hints uh, before we get started. There is a control panel down at uh, the bottom of your screen. Uh, if we are going too fast at any point in time, uh, hit the raise hand and, and we'll uh, take a step back and, and make sure that we slow down. If you have any questions, you will be muted uh, at the moment. Feel free to put those questions into the Q&A panel, uh, which is available on, on both uh, desktop and mobile, and then we'll get to those questions at the end. So if you've got any burning questions for, for Ray, uh, then feel free to uh, put those in and we will answer those as well. Um, don't make them too hard. No, don't make them too hard. No. <laughs> no, it's early in the morning. <laughs> Uh, and then if you want to change your view options at all, up the top of the screen, uh, there are some options there. This one is only available from the desktop application. Uh, you can, and what we recommend is looking at a side-by-side -side view. Uh, so you can easily see the video presentation. Um, so the, the video and the presentation, uh, and you can drag it, uh, the size around to, to suit you as well. So I'm Kate Massey, CMO for Jacob Solutions, and we've got Ray from CleanMade. Ray is a National Operations, Logistics and Service Manager, so it covers a lot of the uh, CleanMade business. It does, it does. Keeps me busy. Absolutely. Now, a very quick introduction to Jacob Solutions. We are a cloud ERP solution provider. Uh, we're ASX listed. Uh, we have now delivered over 550 successful ERP implementations. We are a five-star solution provider partner of NetSuite, which is the global leader in cloud ERP. NetSuite is now run by more than 40,000 organizations. Part of our partnership with NetSuite allows us to have a small business edition called Jacob ERP, which is exclusive for the Australia and New Zealand market, and that's the uh, edition that uh, CleanMate are running. We are also an NYB Advanced Partners, so that's their cloud ERP offering as well. And what those three platforms have allowed us to do is accumulate hundreds and hundreds of hours of best practice so that we can uh, provide a rapid implementation methodology to help clients go live quicker with ERP when they do make that decision uh, to transform their business uh, and minimize business disruption, which is obviously uh, key for our SME clients. Um, over the years, we have built one of the largest, most experienced and certified teams of cloud ERP experts as well. So we've got a really fantastic uh, team over here at Jacob Solutions that work with clients uh, to implement their technology solutions. As I mentioned, over 550 successful ERP implementations. Uh, here's a snapshot of our clients, uh, CleanMade being one of them, uh, Emma and Tom's, uh, another one of our fantastic clients. We've got uh, lots of clients that are inventory carrying, uh, but we do work across a range of industries as well. So our agenda for today, uh, and what we're going to hear from. So uh, when we get started, so Ray is going to talk to us more about the CleanMade story, uh, then uh, share with us how they went about finding the right ERP solution that met their specific business needs, uh, talk to us about the implementation process uh, and what they went through to, to get started with ERP, share with us some of the benefits that CleanMade uh, have seen since implementing JCurve, uh, as well as uh, looking at other factors that have helped transform the CleanMade business as well. Uh, and then Ray's going to share with us some of the CleanMade plans for continued growth. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, we'll then open it up to Q&A as well. So Ray, tell us a bit more about the CleanMade story. Well, CleanMade's an um, appliance manufacturer and uh, wholesale retailer. Uh, CleanMate's been around for about 34 years now. Uh, in 2009, the original CleanMate company went into li liquidation and uh, we 
uh, private equity company we acquired the um, clean made name. The way that came about is a very interesting story. Yeah. It's uh, our CEO, uh, Denny Hamilton, he just sold his chemical business and he was uh, retired. He was uh, mowing the lawn twice a day and washing his car nice. three times a day. <laughs> uh, he was getting bored and he was listening to uh, Ray Hadley on 2GB and as Ray Hadley does, he was getting stuck right into the clean made management for uh, the liquidation, the lost money from the people. One of the things Denny picked up was every customer that rang in was saying how great the clean made product was, how, how they've had it forever, their parents had had it, mm -hmm. um, and they loved it. He then thought there's a business here, because he'd also lost all his warranty because he had clean made product as well. Really? So he thought there's a business here. You can't let such a good product go. Mm -hmm. So he contacted one of his uh, friends who um, uh, also was in business and they formed a private equity company and then acquired the clean made name. So uh, we've come back with nothing to do with the previous clean made company. Yeah. We own the name. So in 2011, we come on board, we uh, set everything up, we met, went around, manufactured our own product, uh, still aiming at the original clean made philosophy mm -hmm. of what's best. So it is the best you can own. So that's what we try to keep all the way through. We look to all the new technologies to bring it into our product. Uh, 2012, we launched again, uh, mainly into uh, kitchen, kitchen manufacturers. The idea was take the European design uh, and you go to a kitchen manufacturer, you get them to uh, build your kitchen and they would supply the appliances, the handles, the knobs, the uh, runners, everything in one year. And that's, that's where we started. So that's the initial clean made story. Fantastic. And at that point, um, it must have been a big decision that you made not to rebrand, uh, taking on clean made that had been in the media quite a lot at the time. How was that process? It was a tough situation. There was a number of people that uh, had lost money. Mm -hmm. um, we, as our company, we assist a lot of those to recover their money. Uh, we've looked after a lot of those. Not everyone, we couldn't, couldn't help everyone, but we look, looked after a lot of people. Um, and the thing being is people wanted the clean made product. Yeah. That's what they wanted. Um, we, the brand was slightly damaged. Mm -hmm. um, since then, we've been able to rebuild the brand, get the name out there again, and it's proving to be very successful. Fantastic. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about the process you went through in uh, finding the right ERP solution uh, for Climate. In 2011, I was brought online to help set up the new company. Mm -hmm. um, there was a group of three of us that uh, actually started it all up again. Uh, originally, the plan was to do what everyone else was doing at the time and have a uh, heap of computers, a network system, buy all the towers, and spend a lot of money. Yeah. Um, myself and the uh, CFO, we were commonly using Dropbox, mm -hmm. which is actually is the, one of the biggest cloud um, unit series going around. And we then thought, could we do this in business? So we went looking. We actually found MYOB. And uh, yes, we, we actually were ready to sign on the dotted line with MYOB when we heard about the next week product. Uh, we thought, well, let's have a look. We met with uh, the j uh, team um, somewhere around here. I think, I don't know whether this is the same office or not. But, um, and we had a meeting and because we knew what we wanted, we were able to throw all the questions at a team. We had a team of um, people in there that could answer our questions. And uh, the thing that impressed us the most, they kept saying yes. Even when things got a bit tougher, they get together, have a little bit of a chin wag between themselves and come back and say, yes, we can do that. That then convinced us because it gave us more flexibility than what the MYOB uh, base did. So that's when we decided to come on board with um, J-Curve and use a NetSuite product. Um, you make a good point there, um, Ray, about knowing what you wanted going into that meeting. That's right. And uh, that's one of the things, um, and I know a lot of people listening here today, 
is probably one of the most important things um, when you take this type of system on is um, management, don't do it. Just forget it, don't do it. If you haven't had a sit down meeting with the grassroots people that are going to use it and found out what, what is going to make your business operate better, uh, you can make mistakes. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of the benefits we had is um, the CFO was grassroots, so he knew um, what we needed to run the financial side of the business. Um, I, I've, been, I've been in retail and manufacturing for over 30 years. Um, I'd worked at the grassroots, I'd actually implemented and designed other point of sales and inventory systems. So we knew what we, we needed to run the business. And we started from the basic, how did we want our sales order to look? That's as better basic you can get. How did we want to process the sale? And we went back to basically basic retail. Uh, we're an online B2B business. Mm -hmm. uh, so everything comes through our website. Uh, it automatically feeds into our uh, next week. And we then work that from there. So everything is basic. Uh, and that is one of the biggest things that I, I've learned from implementing I mean, sales systems in other companies is talk to the grassroots because they're the ones that are going to operate it. They're the ones that are going to make your business um, productive. Uh, if you give them something that uh, is what us people sitting in the offices want, uh, it may not work. Yeah. And uh, I think that's the main thing that I, I can say to everybody. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, so what are some of the uh, things that you're looking for uh, when you went through the evaluation of we wanted something that was real time, mm -hmm. uh, because if we're, if we're going to uh, mend our brand and, and give our customers um, the high expectations, uh, we need it to be real time. Um, and we need to be able to uh, process our orders quickly, manage our inventory quickly. Yeah. Um, so we needed full control of our inventory, both coming out of Europe um, as well as what was in our warehouses. We also needed to control, uh, we actually give sample appliances to our kitchen manufacturers to mm -hmm. display so they've got something to sell and we had to be keep control of that as well. So we needed that inventory management system which um, Jake of NetSuite has been able to give us customer records. Uh, we basically work on the sales order process, inventory, sorry, uh, invoice process mm -hmm. so we needed that to be fluent so that uh, we had a process where the sales order would come in when it was paid it became an invoice so uh, we needed that so it needed to fit with the um, uh, taxation laws mm -hmm. which it did um, and we were able to uh, get those to suit all that so everything had to be fluent mm -hmm. um, then we had to have a ease of management um, when we first started uh, clean made there was three of us. So um, that's why my name has so many titles behind it because I was one of the originals, so they just kept putting title, titles in. Um, so that's what we needed. We needed something that was easy to use. Um, since then, our uh, team has uh, grown, and in our, um, because of the ease of the use, I've been able to hire people and train them. And, a day or two does that training. That's how easy it is. It's just, it's so basic that if you know how to operate a computer, you can, you can, use, you can use this. The other thing we were looking for is uh, mobility. Yeah. This is brilliant. I, I just love it. Um, last night is probably a great example. Yeah. I had a phone call from Europe last night um, saying we've got a bit of a problem, so I needed to jump on and make some calculations and, and send off a, a new purchase order. Um, I was out, I was at my son's place, um, and uh, I was able to just jump on my iPad, do what I had to do, send it off uh, in 30 minutes. Was over. I'm a bit of a control freak. I stress out badly. If something's not right, I won't sleep. Uh, it's, it's just my nature. Um, so mobility is probably the most important thing to me. 
Yeah, and I know, I know that you uh, travel between Sydney and Melbourne and uh, some of the other states as yes. well quite a bit. Yes, so uh, I do a bit of travel and uh, that's the good thing about it. I do not have to be in my office to do my job anymore. Uh, I've never had. I've now got processes in place. Even when I catch a plane now, because uh, uh, I travel so much, I've got a membership to the lounges, so which is fantastic. But I always make a point of getting to the airport uh, early enough so I can sit down, do whatever I have to do, then jump on a plane. I know everything's right. I can travel, enjoy my flight, um, get to the other end, same thing, do my job, I get back to the lounge, I can finish off and do whatever I have to do because it's mobile anyway. I've actually been able, unfortunately, I was in um, Europe travelling on holidays. Oh, it sounds terrible, right? It does. <laughs> it's, uh, however, the good thing about it, I had someone doing my job. Um, I didn't do a lot, but a couple of things popped up while I was in Scotland, yeah. um, and I was able to jump on the, on job, jump online, right. fix those couple of things, contact my assistant back, and say, right, you're right to go now. Uh, so that mobility um, for me personally uh, gives me sleep because I stress out so badly that it's not right. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. Uh, so, talk to us a little bit more about the implementation uh, phase that you went through, and, and you touched on this a little bit already earlier. In fact, uh, know what you want, talk to some of the people internally to make sure that what you're actually asking for is going to fit your business. Yeah, I was lucky in the implementation phase that I'd already done point of sale, inventory uh, management, mm -hmm. implementation, so I knew where the mistakes were. And the biggest mistake is not knowing what you want. Um, so the first thing we did, we knew we had 50 hours worth of training when we purchased it. Um, and I sat down with the CFO and I said, by the time we get that 50 hours, we're going to be fully operational. Yeah. So, so it was the, training and set up. Training and set up, but we won't. So we, we worked out what we wanted. We knew our whole process before we even started. Um, and instead of asking the trainers on how to uh, do a site, create a sales order, no, this is what we want. Show me how to do it. Okay. I'll learn from what you're showing me, but we're setting up at the same time. Yeah. So we used 42 hours of the training. Uh, the next day we could push the button and go fully operational. Fantastic. And that was, that was the best way. The good thing about it, we knew how to use it mm -hmm. because we'd been one. involved in the creation. We'd learned, um, we'd learned all the tricks of the trade and because the implementation person we had was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, we've got some very good um, So by us uh, knowing what we wanted, yeah. knowing how we wanted, we even had drawings of our, how we want the layout, the invoices and the sales orders and the um, inventory reports. We had all that, the KPIs, we knew what KPIs we wanted to set. That was all already in place. So it was just use that 40 or 50 hours as a setup learning yeah. and have the people that are going to be using it as part of that set, part yeah. of that setup. So that you're sitting there, they're designing it, they're working it, they're showing you how to set up your dashboard. If the person is going to be sitting in front of that dashboard says, oh, is there any chance of getting a colour code? Well, yes, there is. Is there any chance of putting a flag or something like that on? Yes, there is. And um, that is a great benefit. Yeah, wonderful. And I don't know whether we can see it here, but uh, I have my dashboard sitting here. I don't know whether that's vis visible. Hopefully, hopefully not too much has no, come don't. up of things that you have to action yeah. today. <laughs> um, as you can see by our dashboard, the red means that's the work I've got to do when I leave here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and everything is colour coded all the way down. Uh, there's flags on it, but that's telling me uh, what we have to do uh, in uh, timeline. Yeah, um, we have flags on there that tell us what states we're working with, yeah. uh, what warehouse we're working with, and the intelligence of the unit we've been able to uh, put into this uh, J curve to the point that as far as inventory, I don't have to work out where, I'm, where it's coming from. We've got warehouses in all capital cities, and We've got next week programmed so that it knows where that customer is by postcode mm -hmm. and 
it automatically selects the stock out of the warehouse. And there's some situations like, you know, your Tweed Heads, which is in New South Wales. Um, ish. <laughs> ish, yeah. But we can, we can program it um, that to tell it that we want that postcode to come out of Brisbane. Yeah, great. So that's... So you really use the, the technology to drive some real business yes. efficiency. Yes. Um, so that uh, leads us into the benefits which we've already started to um, touch on. So um, productivity gains has been a big one and you've really managed to um, create some really streamlined business processes across Business. We have, yes, and that's the good thing about it. Um, I think one of the things we can get an understanding is someone out there that's listening to us now could place an order on our B2B site. Mm -hmm. uh, the moment, milliseconds after they hit submit, it's on my dashboard or on my assistant's dashboard. That's great. Um, we can look at it. Um, if we need it to, we could process it. Um, and I would have it delivered tomorrow morning. Great. As long as we have timelines, naturally, but uh, we set a deadline at 3 p.m. If it's in our system by 3 p.m., we can deliver it tomorrow, anywhere in Australia. That's great. So and that's what our customers are expecting. Yeah, and also um, you managed to do some really cool things from our customer experience perspective uh, when orders have been uh, placed yes. or when they've been shipped using yeah. the um, I learned this basically from shopping online by myself um, and I see a lot more uh, companies now doing it but um, when you place your order, you place it on behalf of a customer or yourself, uh, you get a nice little email from us to let us know that we've got your order, this is the details, uh, this is where we're going to deliver it, this is the date you want it. So the customer then sees, oh yeah, the order's in place, no, no worries. We then do the same thing. And that's all automated. All automated. Yep, just automatically happens. Um, when the submit button's hit, that's when it sends out that one. Uh, we have another payment. When your payments, the final payments are due, it sends out another one. Just to let you know, I remind you. Um, it, uh, when we release it for delivery, it sends out another one to say, hey, it's going to be delivered on this day. Um, just reminding you so that they have the opportunity then to come back to us and say, well, hold on, I get my hair done that day. Um, can we change it? Yeah. Not a problem, as long as you tell us. So Great. we try to make the experience of buying clean made and getting it delivered um, ease. And with the NetSuite and JCurve solutions, we've been able to utilise that. And that all that sort of stuff came from experimenting with. Mm -hmm. Because we've learned so much um, on the implementation phase, Great. you can go back on that and say, okay, they showed me this. Can I do this? Right. And uh, it's only one thing I haven't been able to, uh, well, I was not able to yeah. implement. However, with the help from a few people here in the office, we got it. And so it's in there. So it hasn't, I haven't beat it yet. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. I keep trying. <laughs> Oh, that's great. And uh, you, you've uh, touched on the, the dashboards uh, and how that has uh, allowed you to, to really govern uh, your day. Uh, but you also use the reporting uh, side of... Uh, yeah, we, we have a lot of reports. Uh, we, we have, like all businesses, you manage on reports. We have our KPIs. Um, and um, before we started here, I checked our KPIs. And yeah. They're looking very good for February. Excellent. Um, so if I, once I deal with those little red... Markers up there, I'd say that'll probably get us home for budget this year, which will this month, so which would be great. Um, but yeah, we use our KPIs, then we, we've got our inventory, inventory reporting, mm -hmm. uh, which is very important to a company with five warehouses um, because having the stock in the right place, we, we've got to make sure we can manage that correctly. Um, other reporting is all our financial reporting. Yeah. And I can't tell you a lot about finance, so tell them not to ask too many questions. <laughs> I, have a, I have a hard and fast rule in clean made business. If it's to do with money, I want nothing to do with it. Because I know they'll find me another job if I say I know how to do it. <laughs> you get another uh, <laughs> function on your yeah, title. I'll leave that to the CFO. Um, so, uh, but he's very happy with his finance. We do all our payroll, um, we do our tax and base reporting, everything's done through. Uh, Jacob's solution. Yeah, wonderful. Sounds great. So, uh, Ray, I know you've got um, exciting plans uh, for the future as well. So, uh, what other plans for Queen May? 
Well, at the moment we're we're working a lot more with the commercial commercial builders at the moment. Uh, that's a big area for clean made to move into. The original clean made used to supply a lot of builders with appliances, and we're finding there are builders coming asking us, can they buy our product? And, uh, we've had to change a little bit of our uh, business operations to cater for the demand because that's where the demand's coming from. Right. Um, we still have our, we're still working with our kitchen manufacturers. Uh, there's a lot more ma manufacturers coming online that uh, um, see the benefit in the all in one supply to the customer. Uh, and retail, um, retail's probably not as strong as we're, we'd like to, um, but we keep working with the retail, um, especially retailers mainly. Uh, to develop that. Probably where our biggest improvement is going to come in clean made itself is there's some new products to come. Right. We've got a, a number of new products due in this year and early next year, uh, which is uh, as the clean made philosophy is to be the best you can have. Yeah. Um, there's uh, some new dishwashers with some new fandango uh, technology in them, which will make uh, life a lot better for the um, consumer. Uh, we have uh, a new cooktop coming. We won't need a range hood. We've seen a similar item on the block. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, we've got that coming, but ours has got a few little tweaks that uh, make it a little bit uh, more uh, advanced. So there's, that's, the, that's where we're heading at the moment. And uh, we're looking at uh, a few options with online now right. um, to see which way is the best way to go. So. Uh, we're talking to Amazon, eBay, we're talking with ourselves. We have an online oh, presence at the moment with Gallery. Uh, but we're looking to see where that goes now. Fantastic. So, and the team's going better. I saw some uh, new licences come through. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, I've uh, actually increased the numbers a bit so that it uh, takes the pressure off uh, uh, the three main people. Great. Um, but, yeah, the team's starting to build. We'll have to build now yeah. it's because things are starting to... Uh, move along and with a startup company you, you need to uh, move slowly but and uh, we're meeting all our targets great so you're a big tech uh, so what we're going to do now is open it up for questions uh, so I can see um, a question come through uh, which I will hand over to Bray so it does clean made handle bespoke or one-off type products uh, for example, configured, uh, and if so, how does Jacob handle this? Um, one-off products, we don't do an exact one-off product. Yeah. However, we, we have quite a number of uh, uh, queries about a particular range that they, they want. We've done uh, particular ranges for some companies, mm -hmm. uh, and really all we do is just create another product code. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not uh, a particular one-off. Um, we don't manufacture just one off. We yeah. don't offer a one off range. Um, if a customer came to us and said we would like a new oven, but we want to have purple knobs, we'll give, I'll give you an example. Actually, we had a building company who wanted everything pure black. Okay. Everything. The glass yeah. had to be matte black, the handle had to be matte black, the knobs had to be matte black, and it had to have white dyes. Um, within. within four or five hours, we'd had a spec'd up uh, design and we, the next morning the CEO took it back and, uh, and presented it to them uh, ready to go. But what we do with that, that is basically a new product code for us. Fantastic. Um, and then in, term, in terms of uh, that question, so can Jacob uh, ERP um, handle configured products? Absolutely. And so uh, we can touch base uh, and share some more information on how the system functionally does that as well. Um, Joanne has asked, what inventory reports are most helpful on the dashboard? Um, at the moment, I, I write my own. Yeah. Um, so uh, the one that probably helps me the most is uh, one that reports um, to me on the current stock on hand, mm -hmm. the committed, the on order, and any back orders. I have that all on one report, um, which then I can see what's happening in, in each individual warehouse. Um, I have another report which uh, looks at those warehouses and tells me uh, what I need to transfer. So a demand, uh, demand system for each individual warehouse. 
Um, probably that'll be the two key ones I'd use, and I use them on a daily basis uh, to just keep track. The other good thing about it is, as our sales orders are created, um, we've set the sales order up so it tells me uh, whether we're really getting short or whether we're in a backward situation. Great. Fantastic. Uh, so there are a, um, a range of uh, standard KPIs, uh, but the great thing about uh, NetSpeed and uh, JCurve is that dashboards can be set up to show the information that's important to uh, the person viewing the information. So uh, the system is role-based, uh, so when the CFO logs in, their dashboard will look different to when that's Ray right. logs in yes. as well. Yes, and uh, on our spare parts side, uh, we, we're able to create the reporting, so it's uh, it's per manufacturer, because we have a number of manufacturers all over the world. Mm -hmm. We can create those spare parts per manufacturer, uh, which so we don't waste our time searching through lists. It's just one list. What? Are, how much is how much is on hand? How much do we need? Right, let's place it all. Uh, we've got another question. So, has uh, the system helped ClearMade with the growth plans? Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. What what I what I found is from when we first started, our whole system was pretty basic, and we've been able to uh, utilise the um, functions of the system to develop with us. So. As the, as the pressure came onto us with the development, uh, we were able to meet that, that uh, demand. Mm -hmm. uh, we were able to improve our reporting, improve our processes, mm -hmm. uh, just by altering what we were doing in uh, the NetSuite system. Um, I think if we were on any standard system, it would have, probably would have had to hire probably another dozen people. So because it is so easy, so easy to use, so easy to alter. Um, it's mean we've been able to save on uh, people, basically. Fantastic. Um, then we have a question. So does your Jacob solution interface with order systems from your customers? So customers can order from their own ERP systems? Uh, we haven't actually done that, but what we, we do integrate, we've got an independent um, website and that is integrated into our JCurve. Yeah. So my answer to that, I'd say, yes, you must be able to. Yeah. Um, because uh, it works very well for us from our B2B website yeah. straight into the um, system. We will be, we, we've just taken on a large client now, which uh, that is one of the areas that I will be looking at is have that client's orders now uh, directly inputted into uh, NetSuite, so that's fantastic. Key. But knowing what I know about the our B2B website, I'd have to answer yes to that. Yeah, yeah, and that, that is uh, absolutely true. So NetSuite has open APIs, so uh, systems can be integrated, whether that's uh, for other customers or other um, solutions that you might be using internally as well. Uh, uh, some project management software has to integrate with MYB or Reckon, and it can be difficult. Is your system fully integrated? Uh, and what does your finance team think of the software? So, um, in terms of uh, project management, so uh, I can say that Jacob has some uh, basic project management functionality in there. Uh, if uh, a business is doing something quite sophisticated, there are advanced project modules as well uh, that can be used. And so, what does your finance team think of the oh, software? He's very happy with it. Uh, it's, um it makes his life easy because uh, uh, he just seems to be able to produce reports. He seems to manage. As I said, I don't have a lot to do with finance. Yeah. I deliberately keep away from that area. Uh, but he, he quite oft, often uh, comments how good it is. Great. That's fantastic. I get paid, so that's the main thing. Yeah, well, that, that is very important. <laughs> uh, so we've got another question um, that what if my team are not particularly good with technology? Are they going to struggle with an implementation? No, because the main thing is that they have the input yeah. on what, what they, how they, what and how they want to use it. Um, as long as it meets what you're after as a business, um, it's easy. Uh, 
because if you use your colour coding in your flags, uh, it's really just a matter of them knowing that, like I said, those reds, I have to deal with those today. Yeah. Okay. And I would say by the time I finish this, my assistant would have already dealt with them. So that she knows that the reds have to go. So that's, and it's not that hard because it's all clicking. It's just click and read. That's yeah. all it is. Um, to, I was able to train my assistant in a day or two. And she, she's computer illiterate. Um, she, her, her computer knowledge is probably uh, Facebook. And, yeah. So, and that's a little bit of, uh, but um, she's proficient. Um, and it's just a matter of a little learning, a bit of time, make sure they're involved, give them ownership of what's happening, and they'll learn quicker. Fantastic. Uh, that's great. Uh, so that is um, all of our open questions. Um, so thank you um, to everyone that has joined us on online coming up at the moment is our contact details um, if you would like to book a demo or if you were interested in talking to us further our email and phone number are there uh, I'd like to say a special thank you to Ray thank you so much for joining us you've got such an interesting story behind Clean Made and so we really appreciate your time today thanks very much Kate. it's great to be able to um, have a chat yeah share the story yes wonderful thank you everybody